Hello learners, our grade 12 theory topic today is social implications. We are going to discuss electronic waste, e-waste, green computing, social implications related to the use of smartphones and IoT, Internet of Things. That the impact of mobile technology, like your smartphone, there's instant communication. Family and friends have easy access to SMS, text messaging, calls, video chats, apps, and they can communicate across the globe. We also have our selfie generation who constantly post pictures and videos. Access to information being a, a positive impact of mobile technology you can access websites anytime, anyway. So it's available 24 seven, that means 24 hours, seven days a week. With easy access to helpful content, learners can have interactive learning through watching education videos, playing education applications and researching topics. Another advantage will be entertainment. It provides a source of entertainment Users can listen to their favorite music, play games, watch movies, read electronic books, your ebooks, etc. Saving time and increased productivity. Now, how does this work? Both individuals and businesses benefit from use of apps like Photo and Video Editor. So you take a photo and you're able to edit it, saving you time instead of taking many photos. You have ticket book, booking, which can be done online, online store payment, uh, your banking can be done. So this saves you time. There's also GPS, which assists with the location of addresses and transportation. We're looking at privacy. There is a secure library for you to secure your photographs. You can use a password when you're securing. There are online transactions that are secure. Your banking transactions can be done securely online. It's safer than going to the bank. Disadvantages, the cost. Smartphones can be expensive, especially high-end phones with great specs, specifications that is, and features. This added cost has a negative impact on your families on families and businesses, financial budget. So smartphone cost factor. There's poor social interaction. So smartphone causes poor social interaction as people no longer interact with people outside since they spend more time with their smartphone. So they make friends on smartphones and there is no physical interaction or face-to-face -face interaction. Distraction, notifications can cause a distraction notifications on messages, updates, latest offerings, and so on. And in a workplace, this can be very distracting and time can be wasted. Health, mobile devices emit radio frequency energy, which can be absorbed by the tissues in the body. It also can result in sleep deprivation, damage to your eyes, you're using for extend, extended periods, these are some of the health issues. There's also addiction to games, social media. Some people cannot stay away from social media. So all this impacts negatively. Extra work. Smartphones are widely used in business. You can be called at any time on work-related matters. And because we're using smartphones and you take it home, you're always involved with extra work. And you can be called upon to do work. Uncensored content with easy access to the internet. People, especially children, can see uncensored content, including violence, pornographic content, fake news, etc. There's a lot of content available on the internet, which can be uncensored content. Impact on privacy. All networking tools, sites, and apps encourage you to share information, but you are not told of the possible negative consequence. So you are also unaware of how your information and uploads will be shared. So you upload information, you upload photos, you are not sure of how and when it is shared. 
Hackers are always present and virtual viruses are potent. You need to remember that search engines can still access your networking profile even though your data is private. Next, we're looking at the Internet of Things. Technology is enabling the Internet of Things and the impact on society. Internet of Things meaning devices being connected to the Internet. Now, the Internet of Things consists of all the web-enabled devices that collect and send and act on data they acquire from the environment using embedded sensors, processes, and communication hardware. It's communication hardware to con connect to the internet, the sensors that's reading from your environment. We need to look at some examples. Technologies that enable Internet of Things is the increasing processing power of, of embedded platforms. Now, CPUs have gradually replaced microcontrollers. That means the CPUs can run operating systems. So microcontrollers are being replaced by CPUs, which can run operating systems and thus run popular programming languages. Now, because of the CPU, the development of smaller operating systems and protocols, this is your next aspect, and because of the use of, of the CPU and the installation of operating systems or running of operating systems, there'll be a large pool of developers that can now run programming language, run programs on the system. So it says here, as the performance of embedded platforms rose, lightweight versions of mainstream operating systems like Windows and Linux, light, the lighter version of this, displaced embedded operating systems. So your embedded operation, operating systems come from here is replaced by operating systems like Windows and Linux, the lightweight version. And they brought the massive software ecosystems a large pool of developers with them. So once you have these operating systems, you're looking at programming language developers that are able to program the devices. Developer of wireless communication, now Wi-Fi has gotten faster with each new addition of the 802.11 class of protocols. This is the speed, it's gone faster. The connectivity options for low, low power devices have also been expanding in the industrial and consumer electronic markets. So the increase in Wi-Fi or the development of wireless communication has also led to or enabled IoT, Internet of Things. Now we're looking at waste management. Waste management, sensors in a fridge will record anything that is not used so that you can examine the trends and patterns. So the Internet of Things, if we have sensors in a fridge, in the fridge, it'll be able to determine, will record anything that is not used. And that can examine the trends and patterns. The less waste, the less pollution. And also, you can have sensors in bins, which can record the trends and patterns of what can be recycled. These are how the Internet of Things can work. Your daily commute sensors will let you know the shortest route to your work or home. Most economical on petrol and public transport is better. So we can have sensors that determine how to save in terms of transport. Also, you can note the taxi services for business meetings can be planned according to your calendar. So you can sync your transport with your business meetings using your smartphone. Smart cities, smart cities implies convenient transportation system, street lighting that switches on and off dependent on the amount of natural light. So your street lighting is dependent on the natural light. So using sensors, it can switch on and off. Energy efficient buildings. Barcelona has a citywide Wi-Fi and information network linked to sensors, software, and a data analytics platform. This provides the city with smart water technology. 
automated street lighting, and remote controlled irrigation of parks and fountains. On demand waste pickups, digital bu bus routes and smart parking meters resulted in reduced traffic jams, pollution, water, light, and energy usage. So with smart parking meters, we have reduced pollution, traffic jam pollution. We also can have reduced water, light, and energy usage through the energy efficient buildings, all created through your internet of things, everything being connected to the internet, with devices being connected, sensors monitoring the use. In agriculture, sensors can track microclimates across farms to monitor temperature changes and humidity levels as perishable goods move from field to warehouse. So this is used to extend the shelf life and eliminate waste. Businesses, IoT is used to detect and troubleshoot remote issues, predict maintenance needs, track production line efficiency, monitor devices, et cetera. And these all directly impact on a company's revenue. So IoT is used to de detect and troubleshoot. Smart water sensors, these sensors monitor the water quality, temperature, pressure, and usage. Right. Data is used to analyze how customers are using water and to help them to be more efficient. You can also have water leak detectors that are used to find any tiny leaks. And hence, you prevent the uh, wastage of huge amount of water. Okay, now we're looking at reducing the, sorry. Using the environmental impact of the use of computers. We're looking at ele electronic waste, which refers to discarding of electronic devices. Now, old computers, monitors, broken hard drives, unwanted cell phones, these are all electronic devices that is generally discarded. Materials used in electronic devices are toxic or carcinogenic, which means they can cause cancer. So discarding on a trash heap, throwing this away, means it's poisonous to the environment and it can seep to the water table. So a solution is to recycle electronic devices. So where possible, electronic devices need to be recycled. The other problem with environmental impact is power. Computers use a lot of power, and that's obtained from burning fossil fuels like coal, gas, oil. This increases carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, affecting climate change. So a solution, use energy efficient electronic devices. Switch devices off when not in use. So if you're not using a computer or any device, even a television, they should be switched off. Using a remote to switch off, puts it on standby, which means it's still using power. Set devices to use less power. Set brightness of your screen to reduce power consumption. Vampire power suckers, what are these? These are devices that may be switched off by remote, but are still on. A cell phone charger that is still plugged in a socket, but not charging, that's a vampire power sucker. So if you have your cell phone charger still plugged into the socket and you only removed your cell phone, then the charger is still sucking in power, so power wasted. These must be switched off at the socket. Ways to stay informed about computer technology. One is reading. Reading is the only way, but books get outdated. So reading books is not the answer. Use technology blogs. There are technology blogs or sites like Register, Unintech, and so on. Now, blogs are current, up-to-date, free, and complete, and compete, sorry, compete with each other fiercely. So you're getting good information because they're competing with each other fiercely. So you're getting up-to-date information. It is tedious to open each blog through a web browser. So use a RSS reader application to fetch the latest articles or notifications from the sites you subscribe to. So you can read it at one place. So use an RSS reader application to get the latest notifications from blogs that you've registered to or subscribed to. Getting updates and latest product. 
upgrades. You download patches and service packs to update software on your computer. So patches and service pack update your software. What's a patch? A patch is an update to fix a bug, a specific bug. A patch fixes a specific bug that's an error in your software. And you can add a new feature or fix security loopholes in your software. A service pack consists of several patches and are released at intervals to fix bugs and add new features. So a service pack does what a patch does, but they have many, they contain many patches to fix bugs and to add new features to software. The operating system and antivirus should be set, must be set to download and install updates automatically. So this will ensure there are no security or fixed security loopholes, and you can obtain your new features and, and fix bugs. The operating system and your antivirus. New virus definitions are released often, so it is critical that antiviruses are kept up to date. So your operating system needs to be updated automatically. So it runs well with the new features and fix any bugs that you may have. And your antivirus, there are always new virus definitions, so they need to be updated to protect your computer. And this is your DB application. Activity 4.1, 4.2, and consolidation activity. And that will be the end of your theory for term one social implications.